about five years ago, a couple of my friends found a hoard. Uh, it's been nicknamed the Licking Dog Hoard. And there's been research carried out on the, the finding of the hoard. Um, so I went along to Bristol. I filmed this top archaeologist and he has uh, done a lecture on the findings of the hoard. So first of all, I'll put in you the news story about the finding of the hoard and then I'll put on the lecture. This will be a quite a long video. So it'd be about um, 15 minutes long because it's the, it's the lecture on the finding of the hoard. A unique hoard of bronze Roman artefacts has been found in a field in Gloucestershire. Archaeologists say the find is a first in British Roman history. Our Gloucestershire reporter Steve Nibbs has been to meet the man who uncovered it all. And there's stuff like this coming out. As each piece emerged from the ground, oh, Pete Creswell started oh, to film. His nervous excitement palpable. Roman coin, I'm shaking like and now with brother-in-law Andy helping out, the exceptional finds just kept on coming. I don't know if my art can take much more. No, not me. I'm just stopping it a minute, I think. And inside this lump of earth, after centuries buried just two feet down, this perfect bronze dog figurine. <laughs> this is some serious stuff now. The location in Gloucestershire has to be kept secret for now. This isn't it, in case you recognise it, but Pete and Andy are still catching their breath from their incredible discovery. My head just went numb. We knew it was Roman. Uh, we was on sort of a Roman site. We found some Roman coins. Um, and then it, uh, it's just hard to explain. You, you, you hunt for stuff like this for years. And then when you come across it, it's just it just blows your mind. And when he started to reveal a few of the other items he picked out, I just I just couldn't believe what I was seeing. You do this hobby for many years, and you don't expect to find something as significant. Well, that's my first hoard. If you want to class it as a hoard, I suppose you needed a drink after you found it, did you? I don't drink, but I have had a point since. <laughs> <laughs> It's fair to say the find has caused a lot of excitement in archaeological circles. Licking dogs in the, in the Roman period were quite significant for healing properties. Now being researched at the Bristol Art Gallery and Museum, it's thought the find is a metal worker's hoard ready to be melted down and used again because everything was broken up Sorry. apart from the dog. It is absolutely amazing. There's so many elements to this hoard that's going to be, we're going to be unpicking it for months or even years from now and it's going to reveal so many new uh, pieces of information. And then you've got an eye there and there. If the items are sold, Pete and Andy will share the proceeds with the landowner, but for now it's the hoard's unique historical value that's being praised. A hoard that kept itself secret since the 4th century, until now. Steve Nibbs, BBC Points West. So, uh, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Gail Boyle, I'm Senior Curator of Archaeology and World Cultures for Bristol Culture and Creative Industries. Um, well, along with my colleague Kate, I was just here, we're responsible for looking after all those really old things that really come out of the ground in pieces. Um, and really, seeing really lovely things like the subject of our talk this evening, um, when they get brought into us by people who have found them, um, via a variety of different mechanisms. Um, I, it falls to me to introduce our speaker this evening, um, is somebody whose name I've been very familiar with for a very long time. Um, and that's because he's expert in many areas um, that we deal with in the museum, um, and particularly in Roman art and gems, um, and the sculpture of the Cotswolds um, area relating to the Roman period. Um, he is the Reverend Dr. Martin Hennig, um, and has lectured at Oxford University, and is now an Anglican priest in the Diocese of Oxford. So without further ado, uh, I'm going to invite uh, Martin to come and talk to us this evening about Diana's hand and other bronzes, sweepings from a Roman temple in Gloucestershire. Thank you. Well, good evening, everybody. Um, this was a very remarkable discovery, which I first found out about when flying back from Greece with a friend who had picked up at Athens Airport a copy of, I think it was the uh, Times. And he said, look at this, Martin. This has just been found in Gloucestershire. And I was really excited. It, all sorts of thoughts went through my mind. And it was really 
only when I came to see all the material that, and, and started analyzing it that it became even more exciting. The most um, memorable object is, of course, the dog. It got called, I think, in one newspaper, the licking dog, because it's got its tongue out. Uh, it's a remarkable bronze, um, and uh, it was found uh, with all the other finds, uh, so a little away from Gloucester, where I believe uh, it may have originated. The hound itself uh, is, 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 is in one way is not a surprise because hounds, uh, as we will see, are quite, um, there are quite a number of them shown in various ways in this area and elsewhere in Britain. Um, indeed, uh, Strabo, who was writing in the time of the Emperor Augustus, talks about one of the exports from Britain to Rome and the Roman Empire was hunting dogs. And the uh, local ruler, uh, Verica, who ruled from an area around Chichester, even put a hound on some of his coins. If you look at it, you'll see that the, uh, I think the, next slide will show it, yeah, you'll see that the legs are patterned in quite a distinctive way. <coughs> this is something that is related to what we might call Celtic art. We are, we, we, we are dealing with uh, a figure that is not uh, a metropolitan Roman object, but an object that was uh, actually made in Britain. Uh, you can see uh, uh, other features, like the eyes, uh, are, 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 are very sort of slit-like. They are they're, they're thought of in terms of pattern. And indeed, if you look closely at, at all sorts of aspects of it, we are looking at a, at a local production. Uh, one of the things is that the two front legs are, in fact, but all the legs will probably pierce and it must have been on a stand, and we have to decide whether it was on a stand all by itself, or whether it meant rather more. Let's look at a few other hounds. This is perhaps one of the most famous. Again, it's, it's rather beautifully patterned. It's the same species, but uh, unlike uh, our hound, it's at rest. It doesn't look particularly fierce. It's, it's got some nice patterning on it. And this is from the Roman temple at Livni, which is, uh, of course, in, on the other side of the uh, seven in the forest of Dean. Um, and there are a number of, uh, of hounds from, uh, from there <coughs> and from other sites that are all the same sort of species. This, sort of thing also, which is a recent portable antiquities scheme uh, uh, hound. Uh, hounds like this were very much valued because they were essential for hunting. The block on the left is actually something you can see. It's somebody who is coursing a hare. He's holding the hound by a collar which he will loose so it can run after the hare. And this comes, uh, again, not very far from here. This is in the museum at uh, Bath, uh, and from Coombe Down. Uh, the other one is a more recent find from elsewhere in Britain, from Lincolnshire. And this was, I don't think it's never been published, it hasn't been published yet. It was sent to me by a medieval archaeologist who's also interested in things Roman. And he was looking at the stonework reused in the 12th century in a local church in Lincolnshire. And you can see it's the back end of uh, a running hound. <coughs> uh, 
that, as, as I said, I, one of my enthusiasms is for engraved gems that were set in signet rings. Here's an example. It was found on the Thames foreshore in London, and we must remember that London, like other cities, was much smaller. There was countryside going right up to the walls of the city, and what did you do in the countryside? One of the uh, activities was uh, hunting, and you can see a hound bounding after a hare. This was a possession of somebody in a signet ring. And indeed, I was shown today from a local site uh, quite a, a common type of object, a little piece of a clasp knife with a handle in the form of a hound chasing a hare. So this is very much part of daily life. So we have to ask, uh, is our hound really connected uh, simply with daily life? I think there's more to it than that. I think that we see the hound on, uh, 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 that, 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 that we have from our cache of hounds as being much more likely connected with deity. Um, what deity we will, we, 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 we will discover. One possibility is of course, that the hound was connected uh, uh, with uh, a male deity, and this is one who's a uh, is holding. Uh, he's got a deer on his uh, on one side and a hound on the other, and he's holding a hare up in front of the hound. This is a little relief from Chedworth Roman Villa. Um, what was he called? Um, uh, uh, and there is actually an inscription which is in Bristol Museum um, which names, uh, which comes from the temple at Nettleton Shrub which calls this figure, and it seems to be this figure um, Apollo Cunamagnos, Apollo the Hound Prince so it could be that, it could all equally well be at Lydney, we know the deity was called Nodens, and that would be another possibility. But the horde is going to suggest uh, another identification. What, I think it's, it's worth, before turning to that, to think of it as art. And these two figures are both figures of uh, hound-like figure, uh, hound -like figures which have something in common with ours, so, but they're smaller, they come from Wales, they come from North Wales. One of them has a tongue out very much like our hound. It, it seems to be some sort of monster, but it's... it's it, it, it seems to be come out of the same sort of stable. And both it and the other one had these elongated eyes that we see on our hound. Uh, and there's, I think, a strong suggestion that uh, we're dealing with uh, work from related workshops. I think the team would suggest very strongly that we're dealing with uh, a workshop that's probably fairly early Roman, and certainly in Western Britain, probably southwestern Britain. I think that these, although they were found at the further north in Wales, were probably made in the southwest. So they're made in this sort of region, I think. And, um, but, and, and these, of course, which have come from a cache that probably is connected with the temple, which suggests that they're also connected with deity. The one on the right has got a little, little top of a stand, which was, and it clearly is attached to it. Now, what about the other possibility? Here we have T 
two classical figures of the goddess Diana, who is, of course, the sister of Apollo. And I think the one, uh, uh, one of them is, is clearly hunting. She's dro pulling an, uh, an arrow out of her, uh, uh, of her quiver. Uh, the, the other one is, um, you can see there's a, uh, presumably something like a tree stump and over it is an animal skin hanging. Uh, in this case, uh, it, 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 it looks as though it may be a bovine or something like that. But Artemis, uh, but, uh, but Diana, her Greek name is Artemis, uh, was particularly connected with bears. And I think there are bear heads on the top of the lappets of her sandals. So uh, bear both of these in mind. Look at her, uh, at her dress as well. And I think we will see some elements in our hall that are equally important. Now, when you, an archaeologist comes and looks at the hall, they obviously say, ooh, ah, when we've got that figure of a hound. But other pieces might also be important. Sometimes they're quite small pieces. One of these has, <coughs> has a cross strap <coughs> on flowing drapery. That cross strapping is something that is quite often found in figures of the goddess Diana. And I think that uh, both of these very likely come from a figure of that goddess. Also, we have this, which is well, part of an animal foot, but also a large piece of bronze which hangs down, which seems to me to have a bare head at the end, which would go very much with the uh, goddess Diana. It was very probably, it's, it's too uh, long behind, I think, to be at the lapid of her shoes, but I think it was probably hanging over, uh, I suppose, uh, support next to a larger figure. And so we've just got fragments here, I think, from a larger figure of the goddess Diana. There was a head here, and notice that it has a very similar eye to the eye of our dog. And I think that we may well be dealing with this being the last surviving bit of Diana standing next to the hound. Clearly very similar eyes. The eyes of both of them have, uh, have depressed uh, uh, irises, which may well have been filled with uh, glass or silver or something like that to make it stand out. We haven't unfortunately got more of the head than this, but this is a, a very important fragment which goes, I think, very well with the, uh, with the hound. So we may have the hound standing next to Diana. And there are lots of other little pieces of bronze. There's also a uh, part of, uh, because we're dealing with lots of bits of scrap, there's a little piece, uh, you see it inset on the right, which has an eye on it. There's very really little more you can say about it. And uh, when I was discussing this with Penny Coombe, with whom I worked on this, uh, we uh, we came to the conclusion that we were dealing with only small parts of what may well have been uh, certainly more than one uh, statue of either half size, I think, in the case of the small head and the figure of the dog, but also a full size statue, probably of the same deity. Uh, when thinking of Diana, uh, I think it's important to s 
say that um, she was quite widely venerated in, uh, in Britain. Um, I've just very recently been looking at the sculpture again from Chedworth because a, a long last a major report is coming out. And uh, I think when I published the corpus of sculpture for the Cotswolds, I think I had about two statues of Diana, but they're sufficient to be about four statues of Diana. I think there was uh, a, a, a Chedworth was uh, certainly a hunting estate, and Diana was widely shown there. Uh, what might she have been doing in near Gloucester? Well, it's again this bit of clue. Near the amphitheatre at Carleon was uh, a dedication to Diana. And so I think there may well have been a temple of Diana near the amphitheatre, which has not yet been found. Various people have, have got ideas, and it may have been uh, one of the most persuasive is that there was an amphitheatre which seems to be suggested by the, some of the roads and things outside the city of Gloucester but to the southeast. So it had been quite easy access and, this, and there may well have been a temple there from which uh, various things were uh, event, <coughs> uh, eventually ended up in our uh, uh, in our cash. There are other items as well. On the left, it seems to be something with three little knobs on. This is an odd object. It has uh, multiple sides, and it's it's a sort of it's like a dice. You can throw it, and it will always come down on three of the knobs. It's called a dodecahedron, and uh, a number have been found in Britain and throughout Europe. Um, but it's very likely that it was used for divination at temples. Interestingly, there's a piece it's almost exactly like that from uh, the Temple of Nodens at Lydney. Um, on the, uh, the, we can also see uh, then something that is also found at uh, a, a fitting probably from uh, a chest that may well have contained valuables uh, guarded by a lion's mask that's on the, uh, uh, on the top uh, right and at the bottom the base of what is probably a sceptre uh, very distinct, distinctive type of thing which a number of examples are known both in the Iron Age and the Roman period in Britain. I've mentioned boxes. Now, uh, these are quite nice heavy handles with one and a half of these. Uh, and I think these were obviously used for carrying uh, a, uh, a box. And we discovered what sort of thing might it have contained? And there are various fittings that come from a box like this. These are things that are stuck onto the, uh, that, that, that decorate, and, and indeed, if the box was made of wood, would have parted. Um, uh, it would have made it more secure. Got binding on the left and there's little studs and you may well have had a few of those uh, line terminals as well. So more of these little studs that all come from probably more than one box. What archaeologists often look for are in inscriptions, usually on stone. But here you can see a inscription, not very well done, 
on a strip of metal. It must have been set up somewhere, but presumably somewhere inside a building. And you can see letters C O N L A, I think, Comnatio. This is uh, uh, this was uh, something that um, just one word that um, John Pierce of uh, King's College London was able to make sense of. And the is, the, is, is, is actually collection, collecting things from uh, votaries at a temple. This alone would suggest that we're dealing with things that come from a temple. So these are sweeping things, but we have to decide well, how they came to be, uh, assuming that they're several miles uh, from where the temple's likely to be, as far as we can tell from the site and from uh, evidence of slag and stuff nearby, that we're dealing with an industrial site. So the site from which this came was not a religious site, it was an industrial site. Uh, but the stuff came from the temple. I said that the hound, I thought, was quite early, first, second century, not later than that. A uh, lot of the other pieces are probably quite difficult to date. I also talked about boxes. What did they contain? Well, one of the likely things is coins. Well, we used to coin boards. In this case, I think we may be dealing with, um, if it was a coin hoard, it's the one that got away. It was the only coin uh, there, uh, 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 a coin of the sons of Constantine, so dating from the fourth century. And one of the things, of course, we know about Constantine was that he became a Christian. Well, perhaps he didn't, but his son certainly were. So this is coming from a Roman Britain that has become Christian. So did, was this stuff, was this temple closed and torn down, you know, early in the fourth century? Unlikely because uh, on the whole, they were quite tolerant of pagan cults uh, during this period, the cult of Constantine is far more likely to have been later. Another piece of bronze, which is probably quite late. But this is really a giveaway. You've got, uh, well, we've got a bit of a brace bit, which is a fourth century type, but we also have uh, a belt buckle. This is a type of belt buckle that is very late 4th century, even going into the 5th century. It's, it, <coughs> it, it's quite distinctive, dates from the late 4th century. Temples were, uh, were, were closed and iconoclasm took place uh, certainly in other provinces, and I think increasingly we'll see in Britain itself in the later 4th century. This may have been the time when the sculptures I mentioned at Chedworth were broken up. Uh, that, uh, that, 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 that are other signs of where only little bits survive. There was a statue of Diana in what seems to be in a Roman temple in Greenwich Park near London, but we've only got the arm, for example. And, uh, the, uh, and uh, I've been working recently on a group of sculpture from the Southwark Cathedral, uh, been known for a long time, but almost certainly it was 
Some of the pieces are broken almost certainly again. The temple was closed in the late 4th century and the, it's either Theodosius or uh, a usurper who began his career in Britain called Magnus Maximus. Uh, I don't think this would have been found at this sort of iconoclasm absolutely everywhere, but Gloucester was a colonia. It was a major town and would have been one of the first places where uh, pagan temples would have been closed. Of course, uh, as, as we, can, we can see a nice parallel, if you like, with the Reformation, if you abandon the temple, there's a lot of stuff that you that might be valuable, particularly metal, even if there's no longer any gold or something, even the bronze would be useful for melting down for other purposes. So I think what we have in our, in our hall, which seems to have been partly buried in a sack, uh, are pieces for recycling. They obviously thought that the dog was, it just fitted nicely at the bottom. It, it, it could easily go into the kiln by itself. Other pieces were bits and pieces they picked up uh, uh, and I think it's always a possibility that we only have, as you like, one parcel of it. Not all of it need to be in the same place. You're dealing with people who are getting what loot they can from a site and have taken it to be recycled. And in this, in this particular case, uh, whoever buried it, I suspect, forgot where it was. They couldn't recover it for, for some reason. It, this is different from something like some of these religious caches uh, like the Thetford treasure, which were, I think, being buried to keep them safe until better times return. In this case, we're dealing with scrap. Uh, the intrinsic value of uh, it would not have been as large as, for example, the image of uh, 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 of Minerva, which uh, is is one is the only I think full scale head image uh, of a deity in bronze that we have from Britain, which you can see in the Roman baths at Bath. But all temples are likely to have had images of the gods, and the richer temples like this one are putatively of Diana uh, at Gloucester uh, certainly did have uh, bronze sculptures. It must have been uh, a, a very well endowed temple and it's a pity that we have not got uh, other material from it. And, uh, it's so such a rich uh, mine of, of speculation and, I suppose, a bit of guesswork, and, you know, well-educated guesswork, but uh, fascinating story. Um, how big is the hand? The hand is, I, I, I should have said, it's, uh, I, I, I'm afraid I think in rather old-fashioned terms, about six inches. <laughs> it, 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 it's about that, and it's very heavy. I mean, all these things are very heavily dead uh, uh, bronze, and I was, uh, I had this again today, it's going to be on display in the museum, and the, um, we also had a, a, something that, that, that was actually a, a more modern figure uh, uh, of approximately the same size, and I reckon the hound was twice as heavy. It's a very heavy leaded bronze, and you know, uh, it's uh, for for a figure that's about that size. It, there's, there's a lot. There's a lot in it. It looked as if it was a 
I think that if you think of the Diana statue, the head, uh, it, 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 it's going to be, I think the figure of Diana will come out just about to my side, uh, and the hound uh, would be higher than my shoe. So I think, you know, it's that sort of, uh, of, of thing that we're thinking of. Thank you. Uh, so, um, I'm Sue Thurlow, Chairman of the Friends of Bristol Museum and Archives, Archives, um, who sponsor these talks. So, in exchange for that, I get the honour of handling the questions. So, um, have we got some questions? Oh, maybe a strikey top. As a nurture owner, I'm well aware of the lolling tongue when they've been running. But also, I know that the um, Temple Complex at Lydney Park um, is sort of was linked with a healing sanctuary, and dog saliva was believed to have healing properties. And I wondered whether those very stylistic tongues were just part of that Celtic background, or is it linked with some sort of indication of being used for healing? They, uh, yes, uh, well, what, what I'm being asked is, is whether there could be a healing aspect here that the, uh, at Lydney Park it has been thought that uh, the hounds were, would visit people in their sleep, that's why there are so many hound figures, and uh, lick them, uh, perhaps they had arthritis or something like that, and that this would uh, this this would make them well, and that the that possibly the tongue on our hound was doing the same thing. I, I, I must say that our hound has a lot of teeth. Now it's it's conceivable, uh, of course. Uh, it it has been recently uh, doubt uh, the the uh, I I still believe that Lydney was a healing so. Uh, uh, Site, but, it, but, but it has recently been doubted whether, wh whether it was. I mean, I think there are certainly some motives that would suggest that it is. The um, thing is that all the Lydney hounds are quite tame creatures. Uh, uh, the, the, there's the famous one, but there are others, and they are... Uh, uh, whether they, they, they had survived, they, they're, they're, they're much tamer creatures than ours. And ours looks to me as though it is uh, either anxious to go and run at something, a hare perhaps, or it has, uh, it, 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 it has come back from it. It, it, it seems to me to go with that uh, monster from, uh, from Central Wales, which has a very similar tongue, if there are other things in not, uh, which, um, you see, I think the tongue is like the figure there. Uh, and I don't think this, this, I think this figure is, uh, is something different. So uh, for, for, I, I suspect that we are, we're dealing with a hunting animal. And uh, I've suggested very strongly that it's with Diana, but, uh, we, but, but I think that, that, that here, it's, if it's not her, it's something like her brother Apollo the Hound, Hound Prince. But, um, you know, we, 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 the trouble is we don't know. We, we would like to know more about the cult, uh, indeed the local cult of Diana, because all these cults were using the big classical names, but she was, but it may well have had a strongly local aspect. Thanks, Martin. Do you have another question? Oh. Were these um, figurines cast in moulds? And if so, were they mass produced or were they sort of commissioned one offs? That's a very interesting thing about whether these were 
mass whether these figurines were mass produced, were clearly or not, were clearly some of the smaller figurines were. I mean, we get all sorts of things that are, are very, very similar. But in these larger ones, you are making, uh, you're probably making a, a, a one-off uh, mold, uh, and it, it will get broken. It's just like making a statue. So uh, you, you uh, that the, the, they tend to be one-off. Uh, so th this is a highly uh, original one. I, sh I should say this a little, this a bit more I can say because I, my heart went into my <laughs> mouth when another one turned up. Uh, uh, I got very excited and thought somebody has molded another one. What's happening? It was a little bit different, and I only had a. Um, uh, uh, not a very good photo, first of all. It then turned out that this, which is being examined in the museum, it, it certainly it was not, uh, it was uh, bought, sold, as as coming from, uh, uh, as, as, as uh, sustaining coming from Persia or somewhere like that. Uh, my guess is that somebody had seen a, a photo of our house and quite quickly, not really realising what it was, made their own version to sell to tourists. It's actually rather a nice animal, but it, it was wrong in all sorts of ways. And so it wasn't what I first thought, something made at the same time, but, uh, uh, but something that was much more recent. It, it's, it's interesting us uh, a lot, but it did, you know, just a, just a fleeting moment I wondered if about mass production indeed, but no, as far as we can tell, not. Thank you. More questions? Is it possible to suggest a date for its creation? Yes. I think, well, can we guess a date for its creation? Well, there are these, uh, not this one because it hasn't turned up, but some of these bronzes, um, uh, like the two that I've got on the screen, uh, at the moment, um, uh, and one or two others uh, were um, uh, were, uh, were examined recently by. There's an article about them from these being made in South in, in the uh, in the South Southwest by Emma, Emma Durham, who did a, a thesis on these Roman bronzes, and she came to the conclusion that they're fairly early Roman in date. And my feeling is that they are. They're quite close to Zion Asia. Uh, I, I, I don't think that they can be any later than the second century. They might even be, uh, be first century. There, there was a tradition that goes back to the late, um, uh, to the late Iron Age of producing uh, bronze uh, fi figurines, uh, both of animals and of <coughs> humans. So one of my favourites is, is a human figure from, um, if you go over the old Seven Bridge, as you leave, uh, uh, as you leave South Gloucestershire, uh, there's Alf Cliff and there's this, this figure was found below it in 1900, published. Um, uh, 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 so you get these Iron Age objects, uh, and there are one or two other nice Iron Age uh, animals. There's a figure of a stag found near Brighton, for example. Uh, uh, all of these sort of fit in, and they, although they show si strong signs of Romanization, I think they're quite early in date. So uh, I think that the how was something of an antique, and it's not surprising, you know, these things were, it was a treasured part of the temple. It had, uh, by the time it was destroyed, it had probably been a centre for ver veneration for um, uh, two or three hundred years. Thank you. Uh, any more questions? Oh. Yes, 
I was just wondering about um, how the uh, the cash came to be found. What what the uh, yeah what 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 prompted what prompted the dig? Um, the, uh, you know, the, the the hound and the other the other pieces. I think it was it, I, from what I gather. It was simply you know it was in areas that <coughs> looked promising. Uh, uh, as, as, as though there might be things there, and uh, it, it, it just, you know, it was being metal detected, it wouldn't have been found without it, and it, uh, uh, and I think, I, I don't think it would, it was something, you know, that we were, were it, it, it was not a sort of site that was calling out for anything really, really major to, uh, to be found, and indeed, you know, um, what would one have made of it if one had found a sack with just those, some of the more miserable pieces of bronze, uh, which, which might have had the same origin, but it's the fact that, that this particular cache contained that pound, it contained pieces, what was clearly more major uh, statues, but uh, it, it, this sort of breaking up of, uh, uh, of statues and things like this, it's, it, it's not the only one. There, there are uh, quite a lot of cases in which uh, people just uh, searching fields have found little bits of sculpture or various things like this. What makes this uh, so important is that we've got a cache with all sorts of elements in it, a piece of a religious inscription, pieces of religious regalia, pieces of statuary, uh, including uh, one really important piece, the, uh, the hound. So it, it's absolutely clear that it comes from the temple. Uh, it's, it's not, uh, it's, 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 and it's also the end of it, we said that we've got Things that, that, that look early, the uh, sculpture, the bronze statuary looks early, but the, we, we certainly end up with a mid 4th century coin and, um, and a, uh, a, a, a buckle that must date from the very end of the 4th century. And my suspicion is that the people who broke up the um, uh, I think technically the buckle may not really belong in the hoard. It may well have belonged to one of the people who had uh, broken up the hoard and he, he lost his buckle and it <laughs> fell in amongst the materials. So it, 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 it may technically not be a religious statue at all because it's got because of its date, but it does allow us to. Uh, to date the end of the board. Interesting. Uh, are there more questions? Mm -hmm. I think that's probably quite a good place to stop because Martin's mm -hmm. got a train to catch. Um, before we do 